Uh, hello, this is Dr. Prasad Kodilam. We are continuing the research methodology and uh, intellectual property rights class series for the fifth semester students of uh, Visheshara Technological University. The subject code is 21RMI56. Uh, I am among the module 5. Uh, the first video of module 5, uh, the first class video of module 5. So, the syllabus which is mentioned uh, uh, as per the university, Visheshara Technology University syllabus is given here for fifth module. Uh, which is covering the uh, course uh, outcome of uh, as co5 understanding the basic principles of design rights so this particular syllabus the uh, uh, the module wise course outcome is mentioned uh, so he, uh, fifth module that is divided into uh, the design principles rights so the available uh, the textbook which is required for uh, or mentioned by the syllabus is mentioned here the engineering research methodology by the Bangar Dev, which you can download directly from the uh, internet cloud a pdf it is available so um, i'm not giving separate class note for uh, this uh, subject uh, now this particular class video i'm covering uh, the basic principles of design rights justification for protecting designs and historical perspective okay so based on that a question is framed how can you analyze and compare the basic principles of design rights the justification for protecting designs and the historical perspective answer key is mentioned foundation and uh, rationally basic principles of design rights justification of protective designs historical perspective okay so the uh, foundation and rationale foundation we already know that is what is the uh, how it gets started developed uh, this design uh, rights mainly we are discussing about uh, design rights and rationale means what is the underlying principle what is the principle behind uh, in that so the foundation of a design rights it lies in the recognition and protection of the visual and aesthetic aspects of product a visual what what you can see or uh, which you can see uh, or aesthetic good looking uh, increasing the beauty uh, making it beautiful okay so if anything is beautiful uh, we will try to purchase that the, that, that product than the other one which is it should be uh, having something uh, cool looking thing so the design rights it is mainly uh, started uh, to protect those designs which are having uh, this uh, extraordinary effect if it is there so design rights it is aimed to safeguard this unique and original visual features that make a product distinctive so these rights provide creator with a legal framework to prevent unauthorized use of limitations of their uh, design or uh, imitations of their design i'm sorry Okay, so uh, say example uh, the Apple, uh, Apple, uh, Apple phone, we call it as the iPhone. The iPhone design, it is characterized by that uh, sleek and uh, uh, sleek lines and the minimalistic approach. Uh, it is protected by the design rights. Uh, the foundation here is to en ensure that the competitors cannot replicate the distinctive visual elements that contribute to the iPhone's appeal. Uh, but uh, we know that already Minta uh, heard that there is a uh, fight between uh, iPhone and Samsung uh, design that I will discuss uh, coming classes it, it, it is uh, regarding their uh, um, pro, uh, patent protection design rights on that design rights it is there okay so another example I mentioned that is luxury fashion brands uh, many brands which uh, when uh, luxury uh, looking uh, maybe mainly the dress material or uh, the ornaments uh, okay such cases the so fashion they invest significantly in creating unique design for their clothing or the accessories and uh, even packaging so design they protects their creators create their creations for that okay so they will be paying the one who is creating that one uh, and the company need uh, uh, the protection design protection okay so the design protection okay uh, the fundamentals uh, and uh, the uh, what i call uh, uh, the um, yeah yeah the fundamentals uh, or the basic principles uh, which, which means that uh, any unique features uh, or visual features uh, visual aspects of a product uh, it has to be prevented with un for unauthorized use that is the meaning with the example iphone apple iphones uh, that design as well as uh, the the uh, clothing accessories uh, unique designs uh, that comes as an example for that which in which they are they are applying for the uh, design uh, protection design rights 
now the basic principles of design rights sir the basic principle of design rights sir, revolve around defining what aspects of a design are eligible for protection these principle include a consideration of a novelty originality and applicability to articles sir. Uh, understanding these principle is essential for creators seeking design protection example the automotive uh, design the car manufacturers they often seek design rights for the ex exterior appearances of their vehicle not for the car as such only the design the interior design how they designed so the basic principle here is that they want to ensure that the design is new it is original and uh, not uh, dictated by the functional consideration okay uh, another example the consumer electronics electronics uh, field uh, the electronic gadgets uh, or like the smartphone or laptop they are very crucial the uh, the design aspect is very crucial for their market success the so basic principle of design rights come into play to protect the unique features that distinguish these products from the uh, compared to their competitors so the basic principle of design rights here uh, on just to determine which design aspect can be protected uh, it has to be in something new it has to be something original so the principles are uh, these principles are very important or they are very vital uh, for the creators who are aiming to secure the design protection so even uh, the example taken as uh, automotive design uh, in which uh, the manufacturers they are not taking for the entire car it's a small design inside that uh, uh, car uh, the interior uh, that they will uh, ap apply for the protection uh, and that that may be the uniqueness uh, some um, uh, customers may be purchasing the car only because of that particular uh, aesthetic appearance or in the interior okay so that makes the business so therefore uh, uh, that is the basic principle of design rights so now justification for uh, protecting design the justification for protecting design lies in uh, the for in fostering the creativity encouraging innovation and uh, uh, promoting fair competition by granting design rights and legal systems they acknowledge the value of visual aesthetics and they aim to reward creators for their efforts in uh, developing distinctive designs okay so i'll take the examples of the furniture design furniture design they rely on uh, design protection to ensure that their uh, innovative and uh, visual visually appealing create creations are not copied without permission this justification supports the continued development of new and unique furniture designs one more uh, example that is uh, consumer packaging the brands they invest in uh, uh, designing attractive and uh, recognizable packaging for their products and protecting these designs through legal means justifies the efforts put into creating visually appealing and marketable packaging that means the justification for protecting uh, design it is actually uh, uh, rooted in, uh, in promoting the creativity uh, giving importance to the innovation uh, and uh, and to make sure that uh, there will be a fair competition in the market so the legal system it grant design uh, the design rights uh, uh, to to recognize the value of visual aesthetics visual appearances aesthetic means beauty uh, the good looking uh, uh, visuals uh, and uh, and even uh, rewarding uh, the creators for their effort in craft uh, in in making this type of distinctive designs okay so once they given the design rights they can uh, uh, they can uh, get income source from that that that, that is that, that become one of the income source for that so the furniture designs uh, it is uh, the design protection is given uh, for furniture to prevent the, for the unauthorized copying because it is their innovative creation so that uh, they can further develop uh, all the brands uh, uh, different brands they also justify design protect for uh, the uh, the packaging uh, even uh, not only the item that you purchase even the package is good also, uh, that you have create an impact on uh, the customers so they safeguard their visually uh, appealing the market designs visually appealing market designs uh, are also uh, to be protected for unauthorized replication otherwise some other company also take the same design if it is not protected and they will pack item in that and uh, uh, people will get confused 
okay so these are the uh, terms under justification now historical uh, perspective the historical perspective of design rights uh, traces the evolution of legal framework that recognize the importance of design protection over time legal system have adapted to changing notions of creativity and uh, aesthetics shaping the current landscape of uh, design rights so an example uh, given uh, industrial revolution impact the industrial revolution marked the shift in uh, production method emphasizing mass manufacturing so this historical context uh, led to the uh, recognition of the need to uh, protect the ornamental aspects of uh, products giving rise to early design rights another example given as a global uh, harmonization the historical evolution includes uh, uh, efforts for uh, global harmonization of design rights uh, such as uh, uh, the hog agreement this reflects the historical tra uh, trajectory of adapting legal frameworks to accommodate international perspective on design rights so these points are given for you to uh, to to note down okay so the historical per uh, perspective of design rights it uh, it uh, actually it follows the the, the developmental uh, uh, development of the legal framework which acknowledges the significance of protecting these designs and uh, 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 for instance if i say the impact of the industrial revolution it uh, recognizing the uh, pro need of protection for the ornamental aspects uh, that uh, actually given the the design rights and as well as the global harmonization efforts like the the hodge agreement uh, uh, it highlights the historical trajectory the hodge agreement is means it is actually it is an in, uh, international uh, uh, treaty uh, association uh, it established uh, to to simplify and uh, uh, facilitate uh, the process of uh, obtaining protection uh, for industrial designs like ornaments or uh, the aesthetic aspects of articles across multiple countries not in one particular country throughout uh, in the world wide wherever who are uh, in, you know, along that uh, treaty actually the huge uh, that uh, that uh, that i don't know how to pronounce it properly i call it as hodge agreement the hodge agreement was uh, uh, was was uh, initiated in uh, 1960s uh, the place called hodge in the netherlands uh, and uh, uh, in around 19 uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, it entered into actually the force in 2003 as i believe as i noted from that okay so that's about this okay uh, that's about the first video uh, part one of module five thank you very much sir. and thank you for uh, being uh, subscribing to my youtube channel and your support uh, my youtube channel name once again uh, my intuition 4865 so thank you very much and have a nice day